many times I've questioned certain circumstances and things I could not understand. And many times in trials, a weakness blurs my vision. That's when my frustration gets so out of hand. Cause then I am reminded I've never been forsaken. I never had to stand one test alone. As I look at all the victories, the spirit rises up in me. It's through the fire my weakness is made strong. That the cross would not get heavy And the hill would not be hard to climb He never offered our victories without fighting But he said help would always come in time So just remember when you're standing In the valley of decision and the adversary says, give in, just hold on, my Lord will show up, and he will take you through the fire again. I know within myself that I would surely perish, but if I trust the mighty hand of God, he'll shield the flesh. Again, again, he never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb. For he never offered a victories without fighting, but he said, Help In the valley of decision, and the adversary says, Give in, just hold on. My Lord will show up, and He will take you through the fire again. So hold on, my Lord will show up, and He will take you. Psalms 80 this morning. Psalms 80. It's good to be in the Lord's house. Well, I, I'm glad to be here. I don't know about y'all. My goodness. We're not at a funeral, folks. <laughs> We're not here because somebody's dead. We're here because somebody's alive. It's all right to have a little life to you. My goodness. Well, maybe we do need revival. Whoo. <clears throat> We got a reason to worship him. We have a reason to praise him. And sometimes as God's people, we need to be reminded of that. And, uh, and I, I'm glad that we came here with kind of the dullness. And I sense a dullness. I sense uh, uh, God's people tired. God's people at times discouraged. And folks, God knew that we would have times in our spiritual life like that. And God knew that at times that we would get tired and that we would be discouraged and that we would get down spiritually speaking. And don't you wish as saved people that we could carry that joy every day and be on that mountaintop every single day and just be on fire for the Lord every day. But God knew that we would struggle. God knew that there would be some down times in our life spiritually. And all through the scripture, God talks about his glorious salvation. But he also talks about the renewal of that glorious salvation. 
of the times that his people need reviving. And I believe as we look across America and we look across the world and God's people as a whole stand in need of revival. I believe our church stands in need of revival. And you say, preacher, but everything's going good. We've had additions. We're building buildings. We've got this going and this going. And I'll tell you what, there's different needs of why we need revival. But I think something we need here at Promised Land is we need a little reviving to get some energy back. To get stirred up again about the things of God. We have worked ourselves to death and we get tired in the service of the Lord. And God can use revival to, uh, use revival to get us excited again. To renew our strength. To get us stirred up over things that we have forgotten in our spiritual life. Folks, I believe we stand in need of revival. And I want you to do me a favor, uh, in the foyer there's revival cards, and I want you to grab one or two or three and take them and invite somebody to our revival services that begin next week. And these uh, sets of services is, is put here for a reason, to refresh us, to renew us as God's people. Y'all look at me. This revival service is for y'all. So y'all come, Okay. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. You say, preacher, that's a lot of church. It is. But folks, we need it. We need a little reviving in our bondage. If you would, stand with me for the reading of God's word. Psalms 80 and verse 14. Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine. And the vineyard which thy right hand hath planted, and the branch that thou madest strong for thyself, it is burned with fire, it is cut down, they perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, upon the son of man whom thou madest strong for thyself. So will not we go back from thee. Quicken us, and we will call upon thy name. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Dear Heavenly Father, oh, how I would love for your face to shine in this service today. Dear Lord, oh, how I would love for your face to shine in the midst of our congregation, in the midst of our membership, in the midst of this town, in the midst of this country, how we would love to see your face shine. Oh, God, you've blessed this country beyond measure, and we have turned from you, and we have turned to wicked ways. Dear God, I pray that you would give your children what we stand in need of to keep on standing for what's right and wrong. Help us, Lord, to carry this torch. Help us to be that faithful remnant that you've called to this nation. God, you've been good to us. You have saved us. You have bawled us. You've redeemed us. And so many times we give up on you. So many times we quit on you. So many times we get discouraged on you, Lord. Lord, pick us up this morning. And God, I'm not asking you just to save this, this town. I'm asking you to revive your people that is in this town. And we know that revival starts when your people fall upon their face and call upon your holy name. Dear God, help us as your people to have some reviving in our bondage. Give me grace from on high to preach your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. I want to preach to you this morning on some things that should bring revival. Some things that should bring revival. Next week, the preacher is going to show up, and the, the music director is going to show up, and they've got these great plans and these great sermons and these great songs. And I want you to know there's not this secret, secret recipe to have revival. There's not just a set method that you've got to go through to receive this revival. But I believe in the scripture it has pointed out some things that I believe needs to be brought up before God's people can experience revival. Now, revival is simply this. It means to live again or to bring back to life. Now, if you look in Psalms 80 and verse 18, the psalmist said, so will not we go back from thee? And he asked 
the Lord this, quicken us. And the word quicken simply means to revive, to wake us up. It means to revive, to restore, to revitalize, to stimulate, to awaken, and to quicken. That's what revival is. It is a time to wake up. And as you look throughout the, the history of the Bible, God's people are on the mountain one day and in the valley the next day. They're up and down in their spiritual walk. One day Israel is praising God and they're shouting and they're singing the songs of Zion and they're singing the song of Moses and the next day they're disputing and murmuring. It's amazing how we are up and down in our spiritual life. And God knew that we would be that way. And God knew that we would need this time of reviving. This time that we are stimulated in our relationship with Jesus. Let's just get honest and let's be honest. And let's just get real with this for a minute. I believe every one of us could better our walk with Jesus today. In some way, form, or fashion, we could better or closen our walk with Jesus. There may be something in our spiritual life that needs to be handled and dealt with so that our relationship with Jesus can get sweeter every day. Well, if that's going to happen, we need revival. And if you look in the Old Testament, we will find the topic of revival in the Psalms more than any other place in the Scripture. And what I love about this is that the Psalms and the people that wrote the Psalms was during the ministry of King David. Now, we're going to look in Psalm 119 here in a minute, and I believe King David wrote that Psalms because it is just the same thing that everybody during the kingdom of David talked about was God revive us. God, redeem us. And if you remember when King David took over the king of Israel, Israel was in a mess. Their enemies had had their way with them. They had turned their back against God. God turned his back against King Saul. You remember the mess the nation of Israel was in when King David took over. And as King David came in, King David made some mistakes. But King David loved the Lord. And he wanted the presence of God in Jerusalem greater than anybody. In all of his letters, God, revive us. God, pick us up. If you look in Psalms 80, this is Asaph, who is the music director that King David commissioned in the temple to go lead the music. In other Psalms, it's the, the sons of Korah, who was the musicians in the, in the temple there. And these are people all during the ministry of King David who preached and cried to God, God, revive us. God, turn us. God, we've turned from you. God, we want, we want to come back to you. Pick up our nation and revive us. And may I remind you that at the end of King David's reign, before he died, that the nation of Israel was at its greatest ever that the nation of Israel was more powerful, that the nation of Israel had more peace, that he had given, God had given them peace from all of their enemies. Never had there been peace in any other time than at the end of King David's reign. Never has this nation prospered so much like they did during the end of King David's reign. Why? Because people cried and they prayed and they asked God to revive them. And they said, God, quicken us, wake us up, stir us up, keep us stirred about the things of God. And when they asked for revival, God gave them revival. And God turned this nation who was so wicked, and they turned back to God, and God revived them, and God prospered them. I believe that God can still wake us up. As dead as y'all are this morning, I believe God can still wake us up. I believe as dead as this nation is in its relationship with God, right now I believe God can still wake us up. And I believe when God's people wake up that we will see the prosperity of God upon our life and our nation again. So what are some things that should bring revival? I want you to look in Psalm 119. And as I mentioned, I believe King David wrote Psalm 119. And I want to look at some things that should quicken us, that should wake us up. Psalm 119 and verse 25. He said, My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. 
Now look over in verse 50. This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. One thing that should quicken us or that should bring revival is the word of God. One thing that should bring revival to Promised Land Missionary Baptist Church is the purity of God's Word. The truth of God should stir His people up unlike anything else. If anything stirs us up as His people, it ought to be the Word of God. It ought to be the truth. It ought to be from Genesis to Revelation. I believe if God is going to wake up spiritually, we better get Get our eyes and our hearts and our minds in the Word of God. I believe that if we're going to wake up, we're going to have to open our Bibles. Now, I'm going to say something you don't hear very often, but I believe the Bible still works. I believe the Bible will still save souls. I believe the Bible will still wake us up as a nation and as churches. I believe the Bible still works, folks. It still has saving power. It still has quickening power. I believe it will stir us up when nothing else will. I love when Ezekiel said, I got a hold of the Word of God, and it was sweet as honey. I'm telling you, if anything stimulates your salvation, it ought to be the sweet, precious, words of God. It ought to be when you get in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. That ought to stir you up that God's your creator. It ought to stir you up when you get in the word of God and read of the sacrifice that he's made for us. To read of the love of God, the forgiveness of God, the mercy of God, and the grace of God. I'm telling you, when nothing else gets it done, the word of God can get it done. Let me tell you something. You don't build churches on entertainment. You build churches on the word of God. You don't build a spiritual life on entertainment, you build a spiritual life on the Word of God. The Word of God still works, and this country's done everything that we can do to take the Word of God out of the classrooms, out of the courthouse, and friend, when you take God's Word out, what do you think's going to happen? Because the one thing that keeps us stirred is the Word of God. And you know why they don't want the Word of God? Because it offends them. This book offends me. I'll be honest, it has stepped on my toes many times. Y'all come out and you say, Preacher, you stepped on my toes. I didn't step on your toes. This stepped on your toes. This thing cuts, doesn't it? But when we get to this thing and it cuts us and we apply it to our life, it'll save our soul. It'll quicken us. It will stir us up. Now hold your place there and look with me in 1 Kings chapter 2. And I'll tell you what, King David believed in the Word of God. He believed that fulfilling and living the Word of God can get it done. Man, this man took a, took a nation that was in ashes, and he brought it. There's never been such a reviving in all of the nation of Israel like there was during the reign of King David. And when David was an old man and he's fixing to turn it over to Solomon, I want, you to, I want you to look at what he told Solomon. And then this is what he told Solomon to do. And he says, Solomon, if you want success, if you want to see the prosperity of God, this is what needs to happen. 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 1. It said, Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man, and keep the charge of the Lord thy God. Now listen, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments, to walk and keep what? His word. Walk and keep the word of God. The last dying words of a daddy, he looked at his son and said, if you want prosperity, you get in the word of God and you live according to the Bible. Notice what he said. He said, according to his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, whithersoever thou turnest thyself. If you want prosperity, you know what he said? You better better get in the Word of God and you better live it. And you better apply it to your life. Notice what he said in verse 4. That the Lord may continue His Word. Aren't you glad God continued His Word? He said that the Lord may continue His Word which He spake concerning me saying if thy children take heed to their way to walk before me in 
what? Truth. Not entertainment, not emotion, but truth. Not how you feel, but preacher, that's how I feel. <laughs> God don't want us to walk according to how we feel. That's what got us in this mess to begin with. He didn't say walk according to how you feel. He said walk according to the truth. With what? With all of thy heart and with all of thy soul. And there shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. But a man did fail on the throne of Israel, didn't it? It was King Jeconiah. Some 12, 14 generations later, King Jeconiah failed on the throne of Israel. You know why? Because he turned away from the word of God. And King David said, Solomon, I believe that when nothing else works in this world, if you would just listen to God and follow him, that he will turn your life around and he will prosper your life. Let me tell you something. Look at me. When nothing else works, the word of God will work. When nothing else works, you turn to the truth of God's Word, you become obedient to His truth, and I promise you, you'll wake up spiritually. Do you know what we need? We need to get in the Bible. And we need to become a hearer of God's Word. But more so than that, we need to be a doer. Revival may take us listening and doing the Word of God. What could God do in this place if we would listen and we would do? The great things, the power of God that would be seen in our life if we just listen and we applied what he has for us in our life. Now look back in Psalm 119. The word of God ought to awaken us. It ought to revive us. But I want you to look in Psalm 119 and verse 40. He mentions something else. He said, Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. I believe the righteousness of God should bring revival. The word of God and the righteousness of God ought to bring revival. When nothing else gets it done, I believe the word of God and I believe the holiness of God can stir us up as his people. I believe the character of who our God is ought to stir us up. I believe the attributes and the person and the power and the presence of God ought to stir his people. When you get in that spiritual funk and you don't know how to turn it around, have y'all ever been there? I have. If you've ever been in that spiritual funk and you don't know how to turn it around, let me tell you what you need to do. And doing the Word of God, it works, folks. But let me tell you something. You get yourself into the presence of God. You get yourself in the presence of God. And I've heard it said, preacher, man, when I get everything turned back around right, we'll be back to church. Man, preacher, when I get things figured out and I get myself back spiritually sound, I'll be back to church. I thought, man, that's backwards. That's backwards. To get right and to stay right, I need to keep going to church. To continue to worship God. So that as I worship him and I get into the presence of God, he keeps me stirred. A lot of us are not stirred because we're not getting into his presence. Do you remember that Isaiah was so hung up on a king and he said in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And he got in the presence of God. And he got in the, the holiness of God. And I'm telling you, he had a worship service that blew his mind and changed his life. Y'all keep staring at me. Look at me. Whoa, right here. Isaiah got in the presence of God. And he saw the Lord and the seraphims begin to fly around. And it said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And Isaiah got in the presence of God. And what happens when you get in the presence of God? You see the holiness of God. And you see the righteousness of God. And you see how pure and how right he is. Let me tell you, there's nothing but wrong on this earth. And there's one right, and it's God. And when we get into the sweet presence of God, we see his holiness. And Isaiah got there and he said, Woe is me. He covered his lips. Woe is me. Man, we're looking around. Well, look at... Man, I wish Russell will straighten up. 
I wish Brother Hayden get his heart right. Amen. I'm surprised your wife didn't amen that. Man, I hope Brother Hayden's over there getting his heart right. Man, I'm telling you, Brother Hayden needs this. Man, I tell you, Brother Allen, just listen. Let me tell you something. It's something about when you get in the presence of God and you see his holiness, you're not worried about everybody else. You look at God and then you look at you. And yes, Isaiah talked about the sins of the people, but first he talked about his own sin. Woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. I have messed up. And child of God, when you get into the presence of God, God begins to reveal things to you that you hadn't seen in a long time. And sometimes he'll show you how broken you are. Sometimes he'll show you what you need to be stirred up. Sometimes he'll show you the answers to what you need in life. Sometimes we run around in this world and we're like, what's the answer? How do we get out of this spiritual funk? God said, you get in my presence and I'll show you. You get in my presence and worship me and I'll show you what you need. I believe when nothing else gets it done that you can get in the presence of a pure, holy, righteous God. And I believe getting into his presence will fix a lot of problems. Man, I'll tell you, if we could just get in his presence and worship him, just to feel his sweet Holy Spirit to move among us. Can I be honest for a minute? Y'all ain't never seen me be honest before, have you? It gets me in trouble sometimes. But, man, I'm going to get in trouble. But I hate being a dead Christian. And for so long, I wondered in my salvation around. And to me, I was the biggest hypocrite. And I robbed myself of the biggest blessing. Because I was so pharisaical and legalistic in ways that I was scared to death to truly get into the presence of God. Because I believe when we will get in the presence of God that things will get right. But I believe as God's people we're terrified to get into His presence because we know when we get there we're terrified of what we might have to do when we do get there. And we're scared to death and we have put bounds around us to slow us down from worshiping God so that we don't get too excited in the things of the Lord. And I am so tired of times in my life spiritually that I'm not enjoying my salvation. I am so sick of times how we can enjoy fishing, we can enjoy hunting, but God forbid somebody enjoy their salvation. Let me tell you something. You ought to enjoy the things of God. They ought to be the greatest thing in your life. It ought to stir you up. While the preacher's preaching, you may just ought to smile every now and then. I'm telling you, the things that you have of God ought to move you and excite you. Friend, when you get in the presence of God, it ought to stir your heart and your soul to the place you just want to worship Him and follow Him and serve Him. But you got to get in His presence. You got to get in His presence. And when you get into the presence of God, can I be honest for a minute again? I've sat up here and I'm thinking, man, you know, I feel like I'm at a funeral. And just be honest, man, this singing's so good, I just won't shout. But I'm scared if I shout, I may offend Bobby Shockley over there. Brother Bobby, I had to get myself to this place. I don't care who's in this place. Me and God's in this place. Me and God's in this place. Well, what if? What if I get excited? What if somebody sees the joy of the Lord in my life? They might get saved, folks. And I have got to the place spiritually that I don't want to be dead anymore. I don't want to walk around as a spiritual zombie. Living on the things of the past and the things of yesterday and daddy's victories with God and mama's victories with God. Brother Allen, I don't want to live on their victories. I want to walk on my own victories. I want to see the blessings of God in my life. I want to see the blessings of God in the life of my children. I want to see the blessings of God in the life of my wife. I want to see God do something now.
Praise God we've had 200 additions in the last couple years. But I'm not concerned about what God did yesterday. I want to see what he's going to do today. I want to see what he's going to do tomorrow. I want this to continue on. I want to see the power of God like nobody else has ever seen it. I want to see him, folks. Man, some of you staring at, staring at me like you dumb preacher. <sighs> but oh, to just get in his presence. Oh, to just get in his presence. Miss Jennifer, how great thou art. Please, ma'am. Oh, to get in his presence. To say, time out, world. Time out, job. Time out, family. Time out, responsibilities. Time out, trials. Time out, everything. And just to get in His presence. And just to worship Him. To worship Him in spirit and in truth. To not worry about who else is around you, but just to know that it's you and God in this place. I believe if we're going to have revival, we're going to have to get in the presence of a holy God. Oh, to get in His presence. <sighs> to see how good He is. To see how big He is. To see how He saved us. To see how He's loved us. To see how He's changed our family and our church. Oh, to just get into the presence of a holy God. He'll change your life. He'll change your life. We don't need ten steps to nothing. We need to get in the presence of God. And I believe that our problems are solved when we get into His presence. I want you to listen to this song. Stand quietly.